Here's 10 Mars books accompanied by my star ratings. I want to hear from you if you would have rated these differently or the same, or if there's any titles here that you think you might pick up. Think of the comment section here as our de facto Discord chatting space, and let me hear your feedback. Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lewis, published in 1938. I've never been a big fan of C.S. Lewis. I just don't click with his writing style as it's all too often too obvious as spiritual allegory, just not usually my jam. Despite this, Out of the Silent Planet is a sole exception in that I didn't mind the read. Working in the book's favor are good versus evil themes, and I can be simple-minded enough at times for that to be enough of a hook for me to get a bit lost in the story. In Out of the Silent Planet, a scientist, Elwin Ransom, is kidnapped and shipped out on a spaceship to Mars, known by the natives or Sorns, as Malachandra. It sucks to be kidnapped, but it's also kind of cool that you're going to get to see Mars. Sucks even more that you're going to be offered as a tribute or sacrifice to the natives. It's cool that he escapes and gets to have an adventure. I think if you liked Narnia, you might like this book, and maybe even if you like the old pulpy John Carter of Mars books, you might find this fun. If you're looking for something more akin to strict science fiction like The Martian or Red Mars, steer clear of this one. Two stars. Red Star by Alexander Bogdanov, published in 1908. I so wanted this one to work out for me. Turn of the century translated Russian fiction. Don't ask me why, but I want a book like that to be in my Books I Loved binder. I may have had too high hopes going in, expecting something akin to Le Guin's The Dispossessed, which I'd read years prior and which I recently reread and reviewed on the channel. My expectation would be that socioeconomic comparisons and examinations with a science fiction setting would prove to be immersive. I always crave science fiction stories from non-Western authors because a unique perspective almost always comes through. On that front, Red Star delivers. Red Star is basically a communism on Mars story. The main character, telling the story in first-person narration, is a Bolshevik revolutionary in St. Petersburg, Russia, and is recruited by, convinced to, by a Martian, travel to communist Mars. In many ways, this society on Mars is romanticized and is imagined as a potential model eventually for the Earth. The Martians present their world as a perfect utopia, and for those who read a lot of science fiction, you can probably guess it's not really a utopia. There was a lot of potential here, but it just didn't deliver. Points in its favor, though, are the imaginative future and alien tech, heavier sci-fi vibes than you'll find in The Dispossessed, and some goodies like murder, intrigue, and mystery. 2.75 stars. Farewell Earth's Bliss by D.G. Compton, published in 1966. I'm double dipping on this book. I just told you about it a couple days ago on my Essential Mars list. I feel like it's not as well known as I think it should be. So here's a little bit more on this classic Mars book. Farewell Earth's Bliss has a dark and haunting vibe that sticks with you well after the read. It's just such a unique book for the time that it was written, telling stories about people that everybody just wants to get rid of, out of sight, out of mind. It's not unusual, but this book was written in the 60s and Compton is presenting homosexuals, minorities, and other marginalized folks and doing so sympathetically to an extent. It's not a comfortable read. There are slurs and other harsh language, so be warned. The book is presented from several different perspectives. Those of the outcasts, the unwanted, who are being shipped off planet to the penal colony on Mars. Those already there do not offer a warm or friendly welcome. Congratulations, you left one place where you were condemned and unwanted, only to arrive in a new setting of hostile people and a hostile planet. How these new arrivals attempt to integrate into their new community delivers a deep reading experience and interesting enough characters. Unfortunately, there just aren't enough pages to make the book as great as it could have been. 3.25 stars. The Man Who Fell to Earth by Walter Tevis, published in 1963. This gets filed under Martian fiction and philosophical sci-fi. An agent from the planet Anthea, let's call it Mars, is sent to Earth on a conspiratorial mission. Like any good spy or undercover story, if you stay somewhere too long, you might just get too comfortable and uncomfortable where you are. Your targets now become your community, your friends, and cut off from your past, you might just lose yourself. This sets the stage for a very interesting take on pseudo-alien invasion or alien reconnaissance. An interesting theme, now tropey decades later, is the idea of making it rich, selling off alien tech to the less advanced Earthlings, and amassing great wealth. I like that trope, I like the undercover type stuff, and I love science fiction that makes me connect to a character and really makes me think about them and their circumstances. 
3.5 stars. Martian Rainbow by Robert L. Forward, published in 1991. This shouldn't get all the stars that I'm gonna give it, but full transparency, I love when an author makes me really despise the bad guy, and I really don't like General Armstrong. Armstrong leading Earth's forces defeats the communists on Mars and installs his identical twin brother to rule. Armstrong returns to Earth and is off of the deep end, so to speak. His story only gets more maniacal, fanatical, and strange. This guy as dictator of Earth could have set up more interesting conflict if Forward had gone deeper with character development. Unfortunately, that all falls a little bit flat. Also, there's some promising science, space opera, and conflict moments, but they are inconsistent at best. Because I think I'd enjoy rereading this, flaws and all, I'll give this three stars, maybe even if they aren't fully deserved. For readers new to Robert Forward, I'd send you to his superior work, Dragon's Egg, for a great hard science fiction read, and for a more fun science fiction novel, you can see uh, what I said about Saturn Rook on my Saturn science fiction episode. Rainbow Mars by Larry Niven, published in 1999. This is Mars fic, funny fic, short fic. Rainbow Mars is the main story in this short fiction compilation. Following the novella Rainbow Mars are the stories The Flight of the Horse, Leviathan, Bird in the Hand, There's a Wolf in My Time Machine, and Death in a Cage. The short stories are actually the stars of the show, and they all feature time traveler Svets. Svets is a bit of a goofy character, and his jaunts in his time machine are quite endearing. The initial setting is the future, and handles Svet often at the behest of the Secretary General via the Temporal Research Institute, is sent back in time to retrieve one thing or another, the future is a pretty toxic and environmentally compromised world, and at the whim of the sec gen, Svets is bouncing around time, collecting stuff, most often animals, even a unicorn, and returning with them to the future. I'm giving Rainbow Mars three stars on the strength of the stories and overall well-done humor. Voyage by Stephen Baxter, published in 1996. I'll start this one with some labels as well. Hopeful sci-fi, alternate history sci-fi, techie tech sci-fi. In this imagined alternate history, one in which JFK is still alive, a survivor of an attempted assassination, and the space program is thriving. NASA and all the technology associated with an eventual Mars mission are the stars. The story really feels like we're dropped into the action and the excitement of the Mars mission. And we get to look under the hood of NASA at all the people that will make have made such a spaceship and mission possible, not least of which are the compelling crew of astronauts. While I think the focus on the lives of the crew members is a strength of the book, I don't love that much of the book is told as a look back at the mission planning, and then the present mission is a bit shortchanged overall. The alternate history stuff pushes this above three stars, and the narrative choice to have the bulk of the book a backstory keeps it below four, so let's go with 3.5 stars. Solis by A.A. A. Atanasio, published in 1994. This is one of my strongest recommendations on the list, and I grade it highly because of how unique of a reading experience it is. The setting is far future, well beyond when folks were cryogenically freezing their heads in the hope of one day being resurrected. That's exactly what happens to main character, Mr. Charlie. Charles Aldous is woken or resurrected after a thousand years sleep or storage. At least his brain is. The big problem for Mr. Charlie is that his brain is in the possession of a ruthless mega corporation with nefarious designs for how to use it. Charlie is able to get a distress call of sorts out into the ether. Solace is a fun and unique, at times possibly a hard science fiction read, a dystopian setting with some pretty cool future solar system world building, a rogue Martian colony, Solace, post-humans and kind of interesting android and non-human characters, and at times, a thrilling adventure. 3.75 stars. Refraction by Wick Welker, published in 2021. I enjoyed reading this self-published book by indie author Wick Welker last year, and it's a great one to add to Mars Week. This is Welker's first science fiction novel, and it's a good one. I'd recommend this for fans of Andy Weir's Project Hail Mary, for similar themes of building new advanced space propulsion technology, and in Every Man Called to Service themes, Refraction splits its chapters and points of view among three timelines, mid and late 1980s, 2098, and 2155. The first main character the reader meets is a physicist and college professor, Timothy Strauss. The year is 1986, and while Strauss is clearly a brilliant physicist, his brilliance is enhanced by the voices that he hears in his head. 
With the aid of these not quite clear voices or directions, Strauss attempts to invent warp drive propulsion. The 2098 timeline introduces main character Cal Stanger. Cal and his friends are space cadets at Central Cell Air Academy, preparing for their senior year final exam, the Jupiter Run. Cal also hears voices. Finally, in 2155, Kustos is the sentient robot mayor of New Athens, the first colony on Mars. This mayor has a knack for making enlightened decisions and governing, and is an effective time binder, meaning that he understands and has learned from the failures of governments of the past, and is not bound to make the same mistakes in the future. The mystery of how these timelines all connect make for an absolute page-turning experience. I gave this four stars on Goodreads, and with more flexibility here, I'm going to go with 3.75 stars. Nurstralia by Cornwain or Smith. Go check out the Cheers-themed introduction, parody music, and full book review that I made for Nurstralia on my Nurstralia book review a few weeks back. If you haven't already, this is an excellent read, and it's a sci-fi romp that packs so much more than what its short length suggests. This is the least Marsy of the books on the list, but we do get a significant stopover on Mars, and I want to talk more about this book. Rod McBann is the richest man in the universe. It didn't start out this way, however. As the heir of the most prestigious ranch, the Station of Doom, on the wealthiest planet, Old North Australia, or Nurstralia, Rod has some significant advantages. Because Rod, who struggles with telepathically hearing and speaking on a planet that culls its non-capable of telepathy young people, is the last of his line and can kind of hear and kind of speak, he might just make the cut. Some in powerful positions might not be all that pleased with this level of privilege and might just want Rod to die. Rod might just want to live, so with a little help from his friends and his trusty computer, he becomes the richest dude around and he flees. Then the story takes off. I haven't even told you yet about the sickly megaton Nurstralian sheep that produce an immortality drug strewn, and I'm certainly not going to tell you about all the very unusual characters that he meets and the strategies employed while on a quest that evolves into a question about what he truly wants out of life. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Everts, and this is Fit to be Read.